Hey everybody, this is Sam from College Dropouts, and welcome to a Zeratul Build Guide. In this guide, we're going to be talking about a few things, such as the role of Zeratul, the abilities he has, some talents you should pick, and some tactics and tricks to put it all together. Zeratul is a melee assassin, which in this game translates to a damage carry. As a damage carry, he has three main tasks, poking, ganking, and finishing. Poking is when you damage an enemy as a way to harass them. By keeping the enemy's side weak, you can ensure that your side of the lane has a stronger presence. Ganking is another type of harass tactic in which you ambush an enemy player and kill them. This can allow one lane to push and soak XP uncontested, or can provide support for an ally who is losing lane. As a burst assassin, Zeratul is able to finish off most enemies who have already been weakened. This takes some of the pressure off of your team, and if executed properly, can be a decisive factor in any team fight. Now that we have a grasp on Zeratul's role, we can begin discussing the abilities he has. Zeratul's Q is called Cleave, and it deals damage in an area immediately around him. Zeratul's W is called Singularity Spike. This sticks to the first enemy hit, dealing damage and slowing them by 40% for 3 seconds. Zeratul's E is called Blink and allows you to teleport to any target location without breaking cloak. Zeratul's passive trait is called Permanent Cloak, which grants stealth when out of combat for 3 seconds. While cloaked, Zeratul is harder to see, but not invisible. He is one of only two cloaked characters in the game, the other being Nova. His first heroic is Shadow Assault, in which basic attacks charge you towards an enemy and have 20% increased attack speed for 6 seconds. Shadow Assault breaks roots and stops collisions. His second heroic is called Void Prison, which slows the time in an area, making enemies and allies invulnerable and unable to act for 5 seconds. This does not affect the Zero Tool. However, it does affect things such as towers, minions, and mercenaries, both on the enemy team and the friendly side. Now that we understand Zero Tool's mechanics, we can discuss the talents you should pick to maximize your gameplay. At level 1, you can take Block, Greater Cleave, Rapid Displacement, Regeneration Master, and Seasoned Marksman. Of these, I recommend picking Regeneration Master. Regeneration Master allows you to permanently increase your health regen by 1.5 per health regen globe collected. If you keep collecting regen globes in the back of your mind, you can easily increase your health regen to upwards of 30 per second, allowing you to have greater map presence with less backing. At level 4 you can take Focused Attack, Vampiric Strike, Gathering Power, Sustained Anomaly, and Vorpal Blade. Out of these, I recommend taking Focus Attack, which allows a basic attack to do 75% additional damage with a 10 second cooldown, and subsequent basic attacks reducing that cooldown by 1 second. This allows you to get a lot more bang for your buck out of pokes and ganks, and pairs nicely with future talents. With your level 7 talent, you could take Follow Through, Void Slash, Shadow Spike, First Aid, and Searing Attacks. Of these, I recommend taking Follow Through. After using an ability, your next basic attack does 40% additional damage. This damage bonus stacks with a bonus from Focused Attack, making a basic attack after an ability deal 115% additional damage. This allows for greater effectiveness from your pokes and ganks. For Zero Tools Heroic, you have the choice between Shadow Assault and Void Prison. Of these two, I recommend picking Void Prison. It's the all-around better choice, providing good control during teamfights and good escape if you get caught out. At level 13, you could get Giant Killer, Burning Rage, Wormhole, Assassin's Blade, or Spell Shield. At this level, I recommend taking Wormhole. Wormhole allows you to teleport back to your original location within 3 seconds of using Blink. This allows Blink to be used as an engage while also proccing your follow through talent, giving you even more utility for your pokes and ganks. At level 16, you have the option between Rending Cleave, Double Bombs, Stone Skin, and Berserk. Of these four, I recommend taking Double Bombs. Double Bombs allows you to cast a second Singularity Spike that does 50% damage within 3 seconds of casting the first one. This is a great way to slow an enemy enough to finish them off or to allow yourself to escape, as well as another ability that procs follow through. At level 20, you can build your own adventure. Zero Tool's four talents are Nerizim Theory, Protective Prison, Nexus Blades, and Rewind. Of these four, the only irrelevant one is Nerizim Fury because it only affects Shadow Assault. The remaining three options are all viable depending on your playstyle and how the game has been going. Protective Prison makes your teammates immune to your Void Prison, 
This is good if you're just learning Zeratul as it stops you from accidentally zoning yet important members in a team fight. Nexus Blades make your basic attacks deal an additional 20% damage and apply a slowing effect. This stacks with focused attack and follow through, making basic attacks deal 135% additional damage, allowing you to be even more lethal late game. The final option is Rewind. This talent allows you to instantly reset the cooldowns on all your abilities. This can be used along with Double Bombs to grant yourself 4 Singularity Spikes, and can be used with Wormhole to give yourself 4 effective blinks. On top of that, the extra cleave can be used along with Follow Through to give yourself even more burst damage than ever before. I recommend this talent for advanced Zero Tool players looking to make the most of this build. So in the end, this is a build we're left with. It focuses heavily on burst auto attack damage, which is one of Zero Tool's strongest traits. Now that we understand Zero Tool as a hero, it's time to learn how to play him. The first tip is to understand your role. You are a bursty, pokey assassin, so don't use teleport as an engage into the fight, because you are squishy and will be targeted with no way of escaping. Save it as an escaper, use it only when you're positive there is no threat. The next tip is to target the squishies. Always focus enemy damage dealers or healers first. Good targets are Jaina, Kalthas, Vala, Sylvanas, etc. Avoid tanks as they can just soak up all your damage. With Zeratul's burst, you should easily be able to take down any squishy target. As with any hero, you should be wary of crowd control. Roots and stuns take away all of Zeratul's escape ability, and if the enemy team follows up, may result in your death. Have caution when fighting heroes such as Muradin or Kalthas. Understand that you are cloaked, not invisible. If the enemy team is paying attention, they can and will see you. Watch what they're doing and how they're playing, and adjust your playstyle accordingly. Be careful with Void Prism. Think before you place it. Aim for the enemy healers and tanks, but try your best not to hit your own teammates with it. Void Prism can easily turn any teamfight your way, but can also easily do the opposite. Don't forget it affects structures as well, so use it as a last resort when defending against an enemy siege. And finally, no other heroes. Knowing the pros and cons of playing with and against other heroes can drastically alter a game. For instance, knowing that Zeratul and Nova are both cloaked assassins can lead to some incredible ganks if done correctly. On the other hand, knowing that Tassadar's trait or a well-timed Envenom from an enemy hero can decloak you for a while can mean the difference between life and death. Understanding who to play cautious around and who to not care about are very important in mastering a character. And that's about it! Thank you guys for watching! Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this guide, as well as which hero you would like to see next. And subscribe to stay in the loop!